He's been good. 
I want to invite your attention uh, to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7. And I want to talk with us this morning from this thought, God cares. Amen. In the midst of this environment, can I just get you to say, God cares. God cares. I want to share three translations of this, and then I want you to affirm uh, what these translations say uh, after I have read the first one. Then I want you to affirm it. I want to share first this passage from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, from the New Living Version. And it says this, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Now, can I get everybody to affirm what that verse says and read that together? I give all my worries and cares to God, for he cares about me, mine, and others. The Passion Translation puts it like this. Pour out all your worries and stress upon him and leave them there, for he always tenderly cares for you. Now would you please affirm that by reading that together. I pour out my worries and stress upon him and leave them there, for he always tenderly cares for me, mine, and others. And then the last version that I'll share with you comes from the contemporary English version that reads, God cares for you, so turn all your worries over to him. Now, would you affirm that by reading that together? God cares for me, so I turn all my worries over to him. Would you bow your heads in prayer? Eternal God, our Father, we have come this morning, and you better than us understand the context of where we are. You understand also all of us and our individual concerns and cares and anxieties. And so we've come here today because we need to get refreshed. We need to get revived. We need to get renewed. We need to reaffirm our faith in you. And we do that today by remembering what that verse just declared to us that you care and so God bless now this your servant and help me to say what it is that you would have me to say this morning so that when we have left here we would have left here relieved somewhat at least from that which we came in here with bless our minds and our hearts to receive your word in Jesus name I pray amen. amen would you say that word those words of the sermon topic again God cares. God cares there was a lady who was visiting a church one Sunday and the sermon seemed to go on forever and ever so many in the church while listening fell asleep after the service to be social the church lady walked up to a very sleepy looking gentleman that was there and extended her hand in greeting unlike what we do now because of social distancing and the church lady said to him hello I'm glad it's done the gentleman said you're not the only one ma'am I'm glad it's done too <laughs> <laughs> after all this week I figure some of y'all need to smile amen well this morning because I don't want anyone to say after I finish I'm glad it's done <laughs> I know that all of us came this morning I'm maybe pastor and talk with us I know we all came this morning and and we're anxious to get back to huddle in our homes in the privacy and safety that we have there. So let me hurry on 
So again, you won't say I'm glad it's done too. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, I don't know anyone who has lived for a while who doesn't carry cares about one thing or another. There are often things that get in our face and distract us, cause our heart's affections to be drawn from God and own what it is that seemingly is overwhelming us. And often these distractions, these cares of this world are Satan's tools to pull our minds and to draw our hearts away from God, away from our confidence in God, away from knowing and living with the assurance that God is somehow even in the midst of what I don't understand, I don't agree with, even in the midst of difficult and hard times, that God is somehow at work perfecting his perfect purpose in our lives. As it was for the recipients of this first letter from the Apostle Peter, every single one of us under the sound of my voice this morning We've come here this morning needing some encouragement. Just that many. I thought it would be all of you. You came here this morning needing some encouragement. We need to be encouraged to trust God. Even when we cannot trace his hand, we've got to trust his heart. We need to be encouraged as the recipients of this letter received to stand fast in our profession but also in our practice of faith. In spite of the persecutions, in spite of the sufferings, in spite of the afflictions, in spite of the difficulties, in spite of the unknowns, in spite of the stress that we are encountering, God is calling on us today to stand fast. In this day in which we live, we must confess that we are in closer proximity to the end of the age. And so when things occur as they now are, we're really not often surprised that we are facing what we are facing because we who read the word and study the word understand that in the last days there are going to be times just like what we're going through. Do I have a witness? But in the midst of these times, the writer Peter sent to those recipients in that day who were going through some hard pressing times to stand firm. Don't waffle. Don't waver in your patient perseverance through the times because God is with you. And my brothers and sisters, I came this morning to just remind us that regardless of what we face and go through as children of God, that God has not forsaken us and God has not forgotten about us. Now, I don't know about you, but it, with all, that, all the other news, that's good news to me this morning. And so what we are called to do is to remain faithful and to keep the faith. To keep our heavenly appointed focused. Listen, don't lose your focus. Don't let what you're hearing and seeing and experiencing cause you to forget who you are and whose you are. Listen, I know we all want to live through an um, um, easy time in life, don't we? Come on, all, all, all of us want life to be easy and smooth and without encumbrances of troubles and trials, but 
Nobody is going to get through this life without troubles. None of us are going to get through here in this sinful world without some cares, some discomforts, some discouragements, some disappointments, some devilish schemes that try to deter us, some valley lows and opposition. We're not going to get out of here without some, as they used to say, going through some hell and high water. Can I get a witness? Amen. Even when you're doing the very best you can, even when you are being as faithful to God as you can be, even when you are, listen, prayed up, read up, you're still going to face trouble in this life. As a matter of fact, some of y'all may have come this morning and you can identify with the words of this poem entitled, My Burdens. The words of this poem says, Lord, I'm so discouraged, I don't know what to do, I have so many burdens, and I gave them all to you, but you didn't take them, Jesus. Will you tell me why that's so? The answer is simply a little one, because you won't let it go. Let me depose us this morning and ask us, what are you carrying this morning that you have not let go of? What are you clinging to this morning that you refuse to let go of? If you have spent a bit of time this morning watching the updates about this coronavirus, if you've been over the past week breathing a sigh of relief every morning and, 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 and shutting your eyes every night because Alabama was free, if you've been watching those updates right, of the updates, then you've been carrying some cares. Now remember, this is a black church, right? So y'all gonna say amen. And you've been carrying some cares. You've been watching the unfolding daily map of the confirmed coronaviruses in other states and cities and maybe even other countries and you have family members and friends who are there where it is your heart has been carrying some cares. If you've been to the stores over the last couple of weeks, you've been in there stocking up food and paper goods and household cleaning supplies and sanitizing supplies and maybe even medicine because of the announcements that we are in uncharted territory. And because of the likelihood of the increasing spread and uncertainty of being quarantined and shortages, you have come here this morning with some cares. And let me talk to the over 60 crowd. Because for us, <laughs> over 60, oh, and who have some underlying health conditions. And for those who may not even be here this morning because they have some low immunity issues, we have some cares. When, 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 when they forecast that it's harder on us and may even be more likely of taking us on out of here. Can I just get a wave of hand of you 64 over folk and say, I got some cares? Yes, sir. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've been very mindful of folk who coughs and sneezes. I was, in, I was at the hospital. <laughs> I was at the, say man, y'all too. <laughs> or if they were just looking puny in the eyes. I was at the hospital the other day. I got on the elevator, going up to see El Rey. 
and a lady got on there with me, and uh, Elder Ray was on the fifth floor, and we were almost there, Deacon Richardson, to the fifth almost floor. There. And the lady started coughing. Oh. <laughs> and I started backing up to the rear of the elevator. <laughs> I just came to confess to you that I had some cares. I, I was going in Publix on Friday, stock it up, and um, just as I was going through the door, a man with a young child in his arm was coming out, and just simultaneously as we passed each other, he sneezed. And what I did on both of those occasions is I held my breath, <laughs> Try not to inhale anything, come on y'all, <laughs> inhale anything in my vicinity because I have cares. <laughs> Elaine and I were eating at Carabas last Sunday after church and um, almost finished. And folk that were sitting at the booth behind us came, came out, got up and was coming out and just when they got to our table, the woman coughed and didn't cover her mouth. Cares. I mean, we, we, I, everybody here this morning have some cares about where we are. Can I get a witness? Amen. I was at the car dealership on Thursday and um, I was checking out. This guy got out of the car, his vehicle, getting ready to check in. And uh, rather than waiting on me, especially, you know, it's, 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 we don't need to be getting too close here. I don't know you. And uh, he came, about, he, you know, six, five, seven, something like that. He came and stood, just got right here close to me. And, 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 I'm, and I'm moving over like this. Because we live in an environment where we are encumbered with cares about what's going on in our community. And, and so, as we come this morning, this verse is particularly pertinent for those of us who are, all of us who are in this environment, because whether we want to admit it, listen, I got faith, but I also got some cares. As you watch the continuing outbreak of this thing, even here as the count keeps rising, as we watch the mishandling and delayed management of matters here in this country because of the inept and self-centered administration that's focused more on getting re-elected than on the health and safety of its citizenry, I am reminded of the prophet Habakkuk Ella Daniels from last Sunday in the Sunday school lesson. Chapter 1 verse 2 says, how long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen or cry out to you violence, but you do not say, can I get somebody as we continue to hear the lies and ineptness and, and, and watch the mis and disinformation, can I get somebody to just say, how long? How long? If you came here this morning, before this morning, before this crisis really heightened, and you were feeling pretty secure about your finances, your investments, your 401k and your savings, you, you were feeling pretty good about where they were. But then last week, and the roller coaster up and down, and you had losses one day, gains another, losses another. Can I get somebody who will just admit that you don't feel as safe now about your money as you once did? You have some cares. Matter of fact, these, these days have been... I, I, I confess to you, I don't know why these songs just keep popping up this pig in my mind when I'm preparing to preach. I guess I ain't forgot everything. 
the friends of distinction, saying back in 1969, you got me going in circles. See, I know in this church, I never have to finish. All I got to do is just say the first couple of words, and y'all got it from there. But I also know I need to stop because if I don't, y'all forget where you are and remember where you were. <laughs> Coronavirus matters have had us and has us going in circles. Yes, yes, and it wasn't Corona, it was something else. Yes. Cares about our family. Cares about our friends. Cares because of losses of loved one. Cares because of work stuff. Cares about our children and our grandchildren. Cares about our relationship. Cares about our money. Cares about the community. Cares about the church. Do I have anybody that will admit this morning that you have some cares? You got one or another. But here I go again. You may have the kind of Luther Vandross, Randy Travis, and Richard Dimple Fields kind of it ain't one thing, it's another kind of cares. But you got to let it go. Jesus understood that we would live with care. Now some folks dismiss it, some folks ignore it. Some folks will deny that they have cares because they want to make you think everything is all right all the time and I'm up on Mount Sinai with God. And I'm always up and never down. That I'm always in control, but do I have anybody here that will admit that you walk with God and still sometimes in life you are out of control? Amen. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. You don't know where to turn. You're with him, but still you have care. Jesus acknowledged that in Matthew chapter 6. But here's the recipe. All right, now. Let me just read what Jesus said. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. It's not life more than food and body more than clothes. He said, look, I care. Here's the indication that I care. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And this is what he said, and yet, your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? This is what he asks. Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They don't labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown in the fire, will he, listen, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. 
But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Acknowledge you got cares, but don't hold on to them. As I close, don't hold on to them. Let them go. Let them go. And I tell you why you ought to let them go, because you matter to God. Come on, y'all. You matter to God. You matter to God. I, I want to get some uh, a pep rally right about now. You matter to God. Amen. Amen. In the midst of this uncertainty, in the midst of this spread, you individually and the people of God, you matter to God. God has not forgotten who you are, where you are, what you're facing. You matter to God. Amen. Psalm 23, 1. The Lord, this is my prescription as I sit down. The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not. God cares. Psalm 27 and 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 37, trust in the Lord. Dwell in the land. Feed on his faithfulness. Delight in him and he will give you the desires of your heart. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. God cares. Psalm 103. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. The Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we're dust. Isaiah 40, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Habakkuk 3. I mean, you, you, you know it in the familiar King James. Let me read it from the message. Though the cherry trees don't blossom and the strawberries don't ripen, though the apples are worm-eaten and the wheat fields are stunted, though the sheep pens are sheepless, and the cattle barns are empty. I'm singing joyful praise to God. I'm turning cartwheel to the God who is my Savior. Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say what? Don't be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving present your request to God and God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus the final one that will make us sure that we understand he cares John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God cares. I close with the words of the hymn writer of old. Grew up in church where I sang in a choir with my mama. One of the six songs that my home choir back home used to sing is Does Jesus Care? When my heart is pain too deeply for mirth or song as the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long you're not the first one to ask does, does he care? The hymn writer said does Jesus care when my way is done with a nameless dread or fear as the daylight fades into the deep night shade does he care enough to be near here's his answer oh yes can I get somebody to just say oh yes he cares I know he cares his heart is touched with my grief when the days are weary and the nights are dreary, I know. I don't think about it. I don't have to ask anybody. I know. Do I have anybody can just stand on your feet in this time and say, I know. I know. My Savior. My Savior. Yeah. Yeah. You can't touch the folk beside you, but look at them and say, I know, I know. he cares. Yes, he cares. Yes, he cares. Yes, no matter what other folks say, think, how they act, he cares. Yes, he cares. Yes, Thank God he cares. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Praise his holy name. Yes, he cares. Thank you, Jesus. Can we sing that? Can we sing that one? Can we sing that? Love G. Come on. Love care. When, when my way is. Get the words done. Ready? All right. Let's do it. First verse. Does he 